Passion is. <laughs> Y'all want to hear a story in addition to all the other stories I'm going to tell during the episode? I recorded this episode in my mind. I sat down. I said everything I needed to say. And then I got up to look at it and make sure it recorded properly. And there was no episode. (laughs) So evidently, when I was doing all of my sound checks, the last sound check that I did, I guess I never bothered to make sure that I hit record again. So I guess that was my dry run. So then this one should have very few errors and I should be able to do this with minimal edits because I didn't shout out the editor for the last episode. So what's up, Passionates? Today, I want to get right to it, but I also want to set some intentions. I want to make it a regular practice to start each episode with gratitude so we can elevate the vibration, elevate the frequency. I want to make sure that whatever it is that I'm going to address with you, whether you feel validated or violated, that we start in the highest place possible. Let me fix this cord (laughs) so that we can all benefit from the message. So know that I am definitely speaking from a place of wanting to help heal. And I want you to listen from your healing and not from your hurting. Even if you feel that the rebuke is not as gentle as it could be, go in knowing that the intention is to make you be better long term and not necessarily to make you feel better right now. Okay. So in gratitude, I give thanks for you tuning in, telling your friends to tune in, having listening and watch parties, hitting the share button, subscribing, favoriting, financially supporting with donations, contributions. Most importantly, thank you for being open to listening to and heeding good counsel. Without your willingness to listen, it's just me talking to myself. And that's fine too, (laughs) because I understand the importance of making your messaging good, regardless of who's listening. Y'all remember this post? Whoever your audience may be, for all of those times when you feel like you're talking to yourself and you feel like nobody's listening and you know self is listening, ensure that the messaging is so good that even if you're the only person listening, you're still benefiting from what's being said. Ensure that the delivery is so good that it's enthralling and engrossing for you. Make sure that you are captivating enough to captivate yourself. Because let me tell you something, vanity or not, like, call me what you want to, okay? Because I listen to my podcast. I'm dope. Y'all don't have to listen to me. I mean, I'd appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Because the numbers be looking whack sometimes, and I'll be like, like, I I have all this good information to share. Why don't you people want to (laughs) listen? But I also feel like that because I'm like, wait, no, but I heard this. And this was really, really good. This was really well delivered. This was really well thought out. And so, yeah, I'm going to pat myself on the back because I've done the work. So I deserve that acknowledgement. The point is, make sure that if you are the only person that's listening to you, that what you said to you was good. Because you still matter. Even if nobody else tells you you do. Today's episode will be very reminiscent of the previous pod for several reasons. For one, I started writing this episode for that pod before I decided to go full throttle with this one. And number two, I'm still brilliant. (laughs) I'm still brilliant. Y'all still my friends. And we're still working on bettering self, which by default makes us better to and for others. So that's that on that. Today's topic is availability. It's not self-destruction, but I love that song. So anyway. Availability as defined by Oxford languages is as follows. The quality of being able to be used or obtained. The state of being otherwise unoccupied. Freedom to do something. And the informal, the state of not being currently involved in a sexual or romantic relationship. Which you might not know is that I always go to Merriam-Webster to see what they have to say. And they had like six definitions. So definition one is present or ready for immediate use. Two, A, is accessible or obtainable. Two, B, free and able to do something at a particular time. Two, C, not involved in a romantic relationship. Three, 
qualified or willing to do something or to assume a responsibility for present in such chemical or physical form as to be usable as by a plant. Five is a law definition, valid, used of a legal plea or charge. Six is archaic, having a beneficial effect. Passionists, have you ever worked with friends? Either like as a coworker, a supervisor, or a supervisee, or even on like on a team? I'm wondering what your experience was like. That's why I asked that. Like, did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Did it strengthen or did it wreck the relationship? Well, personally, I've worked in all of these instances and I've experienced both outcomes. We talked about some of those intricacies in the last pod in the grief episode. And that was from the aspect of building or running a business with a friend who's dealing with grief and depression. Generally, in my experience, working with friends can be extremely challenging. The success of that working relationship is predicated on the strength of the friendship and the strength of the character of the parties involved. And pay attention to my word use because character and ego are not only not the same, often they aren't friends. Character requires humility and ego often has an allergy to being humble without intentional work and discipline to keep it in line. So as previously stated, this episode is a carryover from the previous pod and it was supposed to be an episode done with friends. And while it would have been dope to bring in other perspectives, the friends I asked weren't available. Hence how we arrived here at availability. When working with friends, we often hope for and even expect availability from them. When they aren't available one or two times, we can be understanding because life happens and we know what it's like to want to be available when it's just not possible. So for the first few asks with negative results, maybe we don't feel a way. It can start to get uncomfortable after those first couple asks because who wants to feel like they're begging or they're harassing someone? Now, if the schedules don't generally line up, it's more like we got to figure this out. But if it's not a schedule thing and it's the not today because life happened, but that's always the why, it can and will make them feel a way, especially if you're that friend that's always unavailable for this one friend, but always got stories about how available you are for other people. No one wants to hear about how amazing you are to others when you're not equally good to them, especially if they're great to you. No one wants to hear about what kind of sacrifices you made for someone else when you act like it's a hardship to make a sacrifice for them. And yes, life happens, but two things, that expression, Life got in the way. Cancel it. Because life going to keep happening until you die. Life is not in your way. Poor navigation skills, limited effort, those are possibilities. Because we make time for what we want to make time for. We find time for what we want to find time for. And yes, things can slip our minds. And yes, you can get busy and barely have a moment. But beloved, like it or not, friendship may not have an expiration date in your book, but you are most definitely testing the shelf life of your friend's patience and their interest in putting work into a friendship that may not be meeting their needs. All of that under consideration. When working with friends, the operative is working. When you have a job, you have to be available to meet the company's needs. In order to seduce you into staying in the rat race and meeting said needs, even when that's not conducive to or considerate of your needs, benefits packages are offered. Health and life and accidental death coverage is provided, maybe free, maybe at an affordable cost. Paid time off is offered, and the longer you're willing to thug it out, generally, the more time you'll accrue. Paid holidays are offered, maybe 401k, maybe even a pension. I'm thinking about... Mr. Northcutt, my high school history teacher, who told us to make sure that we looked at the benefits before we took any job. Hi, Mr. Northcutt. In any event, I personally believe that many of these jobs, they offer even the skimpiest benefit packages, one, to stay competitive, but two, because they know the check isn't enough for the work they're going to ask you to do after you onboard. Now, on the flip side, I remember watching a YouTube video where this attorney was talking about why she quit her job at a nationally top-ranked law firm. 
the short version is that she had to choose between the time she needed to stay to say her final goodbyes to a dying grandparent and a case that she was working on. Now, what she needed from the company was empathy. She needed compassion. She got her feelings hurt because they not only denied her the time that she was requesting, but then they very venomously asked her, well, why do you think we pay you what we pay you? For everything that she had given, for every sacrifice she had made, she was still expected to be available and to perform. And she did. Regretfully, brokenheartedly, and any other adverb you can think of to modify how the job was done. She didn't tell them people they had to understand. She didn't risk the relationship. She respected the terms, even at the risk of having to live with what to some would be the unlivable. So now let's talk about this understanding thing. OK, because this is big. There are entirely too many of us out here way too callous with this expression. Oh, well, you just going to have to understand such and such going to have to understand. Let me tell you something. No one has to understand anything. You crazy as hell if you think someone owes you their understanding in exchange for your neglect or your abuse. Recognizing that certain challenges come with certain circumstances, that's one thing. But if we're being honest across the board, there are plenty of times where the effort could have been made. And instead, we use the excuse of the circumstance and then expect the understanding from someone else. When working with friends, this becomes especially challenging and taxing when one friend always wants the other to be understanding and empathetic to what they have going on personally while the other always has to just deal with it. You and I are coworkers. Your life is a mess. Every day there's a new issue, a new complaint. Every day you have an attitude or some type of grievance. Every day you expect me to be compassionate and just understand that you're going through something. You underperform. So the onus is on me to pick up the slack. You make unnecessary errors and the expectation is on me to work around those errors or correct them. You're constantly late. So there's no room for me to have any kind of emergency or for me to be running late because if I don't show up, no one is there. And while you're working through your stuff and falling short on every level and at every turn, you expect me to understand. And that sounds reasonable because if I'm really your friend... I should support you in your time of need, right? And that sounds logical until. It sounds like what the ideal friendship is made of until it's time to reciprocate. Can you do what you expect of me? Can I underperform, make errors, and leave you responsible to fix or navigate them? And all that after I show up late and I start with a chip on my shoulder? Is it acceptable now that you're on the receiving end of it? Is all that extra work still the mark of a good friend or am I now selfish, self-serving and narcissistic? Am I now abusive? And if the answer is yes, why when it was you, you were going through something, but when the shoe was on the other foot, I'm a bad person. All right. So it's problematic as coworkers. Agree. What more if I'm your supervisor? So you still have these issues. I'm your supervisor. I'm responsible for holding you accountable and reprimanding or reporting you when you drop the ball. That's the job description. It's not personal. It's the agreement I entered when accepting the position. Whoever my supervisee is, my supervisees are, that's what I'm expected to do. I needed more money. I worked for this position. I earned it. My goal was to grow with the company and move up the ladder. I'm hitting my benchmarks and you're hitting your head up against the wall of doom and gloom. If your behavior was identifiably problematic when we were on the same level, what are you expecting me now that we're not? Well, as my friend, you should. As a friend to myself, I should prioritize myself, not your ego, not your refusal to go to therapy. As your friend, we can go out after work and I can tell you that your disposition could potentially cost you your job. But on the clock, these people are not paying me to manage your feelings. They are paying me to manage this workload and you are falling short. Now, shoe on the other foot, as my friend, would you risk your job for me? Can I expect you to run the risk of being let go, not because you're not doing the work, but because I'm falling short, I don't want to do better, or you don't want to fire me? 
Because after this expectation that I risk it all for you, are you now willing or even in position to support me until I find something else? Since the reason I'm no longer employed is because the options were be your friend or be your boss and I couldn't be both. So I chose friendship and be reminded that support me doesn't mean float me $20 or pay for my drinks at karaoke. Support me means you're maintaining my lifestyle the same way it was since you cost me my lifestyle. Are you willing to do that? Because if you can't afford it, the question is already null and void. But if you can afford it, is my friendship now worth that expense to you? All right, now I've really moved up the ladder. I'm not even with the company anymore, okay? Because I done stepped out on my faith. I started my business. It is flourishing. I am in the black. I am expanding. I need employees. I'm in a position to pay well. Baby, I know you land if you think I'm out to hire you. Well, why wouldn't you hire me? I'm your friend and I need a job. And I'm because you aren't available to meet the needs of the business or the expectations of the position, yet you have expectations of understanding, exceptions being made, and passes being granted on the strength of our relationship. You wanting me to understand has a level of reasonable to it, but here's the caveat. At this level, while I can empathize with your experience, if I want this business to continue to grow and flourish, I have to understand the needs of the business above yours. There are days when I may have to put the needs of the business in front of my own. Now imagine me putting my own challenges aside for the sake of the business, but saying not only should you not put your issues aside, you have my permission to potentially endanger this business, the one that I've worked so hard to build and the very one you are now reliant on for your income. You have my permission to act out and feel what you feel. And I'm okay to your needs and your mental and emotional and your spiritual health. All while intentionally neglecting mine. Because where they do that at? Stop asking people to be available to you in ways you wouldn't be available to them if given a choice. Stop expecting people to offer availability that not only wouldn't you offer in a hypothetical instance, but that you don't currently offer in real time. And when someone is offering you empathy, when they're offering you support and assistance, don't just capitalize on it and squander it. Don't take it for granted. And miss me and miss everyone else with the sob story of how someone's not your friend if they've now disallowed you to mistreat them. No, they're not being a bad friend to you. They're being a better friend to their self. It's not that they're unavailable to you. It's that they've reprioritized or restructured the availability that they previously offered you and you're feeling the effects of it. If you're not available to do the job per the job description, the job cannot be available to you. Employment turnover costs and so does emotional turnover. And dare I say, the latter is often more expensive. Now, all of the aforementioned scenarios were related to employment, but it's no different when we're working together on anything else. It could be a project. It could be a new business venture. It could be a party. The same way you show up to a job and for people you may or may not like or respect, the same way you show up without exception or excuse, that's the same way you should show up when it's time to work with and for friends. No, they may not be compensating you monetarily, but do they show up for you in other areas of your life? Are they supportive? Are they available? Because if the answer is yes, they're paying you in ways that your place of employment probably doesn't. And with the way these jobs ain't loyal, there's a better chance that that job won't be there, but that person still will. Leaving the burden on them and thinking that your relationship makes it okay is an easy way to not only damage that one relationship, but to damage potential relationships that could have been formed with an introduction or a good word from that one person. It's a great way to ensure that that person will probably never work with you again. Now, looking at this from the other side, if you know you're unavailable on any level, say that I can be mad at your truth, but I can't be mad at you for telling the truth. Like, does that make sense? Like, I don't have to like what you said. But at some point, I'm going to have to acknowledge that you empowered me by letting me know what it was. So I knew exactly what I was dealing with. 
whether it's being unavailable or minimally available, if you let the other person know exactly what it is going in, they can't fault you where you don't perform. You tell me you can do anything that doesn't involve you having to directly deal with people. Okay. I can't get mad when you're unavailable for phone calls or responding to comments, even if you were available to send out emails and make posts. I'm going to say this one last thing about availability, and then I'm going to let you sit and think about all that we've discussed today. Someone being off from their job doesn't mean that they're available or that they're free. This was actually a special request public service announcement that I felt folded well into this episode. Shouts to my niece, Shayna, for the request. What's up, Pinky? Someone not being scheduled to report to their place of business does not automatically mean they're free for what you'd like to do, even if it's just a simple conversation. And I know that can be tough. Your friend can't talk when they're at work. They can't talk when they're en route to or en route from work. They can't talk when they get home and when they're off, they don't want to talk. Even if it makes us feel high key neglected, it's still a real thing. <laughs> Someone being off doesn't mean they're free or available and their availability may come with limitations. Yes, I'm available to come to your house and help you paint. No, I'm not available for social banter with the other people you've invited for this paint party. Yes, I'm available Thursday. No, I'm not available to sit around waiting for you all day Thursday. Passion is, I know I could say a lot more on this topic, but I feel like we've really chewed enough fat for today. You know the drill. Go forth, be great, be filled with bliss, be armed and empowered with knowledge. Remember that availability is an advisement that should be given and not an assumption that should be made. Halfway showing up in your availability to your personal relationships while expecting compassion, tolerance and availability from the same people you're failing is not the wave. In all things, be passionate. I'll see you later. Also, if you'd like to make a donation to the podcast, the cash app is in the description box below. See you next week.